Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, I will show you how to use the studio light and neon and glow tools to transform your portrait photos into trendy and eye-catching images. Now we have a lot to do, so let's get started. And here we are in Luminar Neo in the catalog module where we are looking at our sample file. Now, as always, if you want to do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, click on the link there and download the sample files now. When you have them, import them into Luminar Neo and we can start. Now, first come first, let's have a look at the final result and let's talk about what we are going to do. Well, first we're going to use the develop tool, toning tool and studio light tool to get this really nice neon pink or red color. After that, when we finish with that, we're going to use the neon and glow tool to add this triangle around to add depth and really to make the image stand out. So there you have it. This is what we're going to do. So now we're going to select the sample file and hit E on our keyboard to move into the edit module. As I told you, we're going to first adjust the colors or the overall feel of the image. And to do that, we're going to jump into the develop tool on our main toolbar. Here we're going to go into the color section and here we're going to go into the thin slider and pretty much take it and bring it all the way up. That's all here in the develop tool so we can close everything and continue. After this, we're going to move into the toning tool, which is available in the creative section of our main toolbar. Simply open it and let's start by increasing the amount, let's say somewhere around 70. Make sure that you are on shadows and here increase the saturation. The amount of the saturation doesn't really matter right now, because first thing we need to do is to adjust its hue. So let's take the hue slider and bring it up and we are really looking for the pink red result. So I think somewhere around even 330. Now, if the saturation is too strong, we can bring it down, but I think somewhere around 60 or 58 is good. After this, we're going to move into the highlights and with the highlights again, bring the saturation up and then on hue slider, go to 330. Now, if you want to adjust quickly the slider, you can double click on the number and then use your keypad to add the number there. Again, let's just bring the saturation down a little bit and let's stick to 50 here as well. So shadows on 60 and highlights on 50. Now we can adjust this later. So don't worry too much about the overall look. And for the time being, let's close the toning tool. Finally, to adjust the overall look, we're going to use the Studio Light tool. So for this, we need to go into the portrait section and open the Studio Light here. First come first, we're going to go into the amount. But before we start, don't forget that we have a full tutorial on how to use this tool, how to use all its controllers and sliders. And if you want to watch it, I will link the video into the description of this video, as well as add it to the corner of the screen now. So what we need to do is to increase the amount slider and basically the application will scan the image and prepare our light. Now 40 is maybe a little bit too strong, so let's go to 30. After that, we can come to our image where we have this white dot and the white dot represents the light. So we're going to position it around somewhere around here. I really like that it brings light here and here and also to the jacket. And now we're going to adjust the color of the light. Jumping into hue, we can already add the number we know, 330. And again, just hit enter. After this, we need to increase the saturation slider. So let's do that. And I don't want to go crazy. So I think maybe just somewhere around 40. Finally, we can play around with the depth slider and add more of the area of the subject, or we can also bring it down and adjust it the other way around. But for me, I think somewhere around 30 here or 40 is looking good. 
After this, to finish it off, we're going to jump to the top of the tool where we're going to add some light contrast. So let's say somewhere around five. And we also going to adjust the brightness just to bring it down a little bit. I think somewhere around minus 50. Once we finish here, we can close the tool and we are done with the color adjustments. So this is a good time to have a look at the before and after. And to do that, we can go to the bottom of our screen and use this little eye icon. When you click on it, you will see the before and after. You can also use this little slider and it's quite fun to look at it when you can slide it around. And again, this is how it looks after our adjustments and before. So let's just switch it off and let's continue. Now we're going to add our neon triangle. To do that, we're going to go into creative section and open the neon and glow tool. Again, let's make it nice and visible. We're going to go into the neon. And again, just like for the studio light, if you want to see a full tutorial on how to use the neon and glow tool, we already have it available on our YouTube channel and I will add it to the corner of the screen now. Now, once we're ready, all we need to do is to increase the amount slider and the application go ahead and scan the image and prepare automatic mask for adding the glow around the person or around subject or the main subject of the photo. Now, as you can see, it's already finished. However, for this project, we're not going to be using the automatic mask. So to adjust it, we're going to go into the refine object option here. Click on erase and then increase the size brush all the way up. After this, we're going to adjust our softness to bring it all the way down. And now we can very quickly paint over the subject and remove the automatic mask. Finally, now it's time to paint our triangle. So to do that, we're going to go back into our toolbar here, click on draw. And after that, adjust the size of our brush all the way down to 10. Once we happy with our brush settings, we can paint the first point of our triangle. So let's say that it's going to be right here. So all we need to do is to just click once. Once we do that, we will get the first point of our neon. And now we're going to paint the second point somewhere around here. And all I want you to do is to hold shift on your keyboard and then click again. By holding the shift, the application basically a paint straight line between the two points. Again, hold the shift and select the third point for our triangle. So let's say it's going to be here. So again, holding shift and one click. And finally, we need to just paint the last line of our triangle and to make sure that it's as precise as possible, hit backslash key on your keyboard so we can see the mask of the neon. And again, hold the shift and click as close as to the original position as possible. So now we have the triangle painted. And if you again hit the backslash key, you will see the basic area of the triangle. But of course, we just want the outer line. We don't want the inside. So to adjust this again, backslash key to bring the mask, and let's increase the size of our brush and we're going to go quite quickly. We can even make it a little bit bigger. Let's just click somewhere here and then hold the shift again and paint here. After this, let's again click one more time here and hold the shift into this corner, creating a straight line. And again, somewhere here and creating another line here. Once we do that, we can very quickly fill in the center of the triangle. And then we can use our keyboard with the command or control plus to zoom in spacebar to move around and just adjust the size of your brush. You can do that with the slider here or the bracket keys and very quickly just paint in these little corners to make sure that we really create full triangle. So we're looking good here. So holding a space bar, moving around and then painting right here. 
a look, making sure everything is covered. If you need, adjust the size of your brush. And again, finally, the last part right here. Let's make sure that everything looks good. Um, there we go here. I can see that I have forgot little space here. So let's just adjust that. Let's have a quick look around. I think everything is looking good. So once we're done, let's just zoom out using command or control zero. And then again, backslash key to bring back our triangle. So everything is looking great. However, I would like the triangle to have a sharp corners, not these round ones. So to adjust this, once we finish here, all we need to do is to click on the refine object and the arrow, and we are back into the initial menu. To get the sharper corners, we're going to use the indent slider. When we take it down, you will see that the triangle gets smaller. However, we get sharper corners, just like this. So indent down to around minus eight or whatever works on your image right now. And the next thing, we're going to quickly jump into the style of the neon. So with the spread, I'm quite happy with the thickness of the neons. So we leave it on the default 60. We can add a little bit of the atmosphere if we want to. And then in the hue, again, we're going to change it to the 330. Hit enter. So it's all red. And with the whiteness, I'm quite happy with what we have. So let's leave it there. Now, coming back to our example, you have seen that basically this line was behind the face and then going in front of the body. So to do this, it's actually really simple. We need to go into the masking. In the masking, click on Mask AI and the application will scan the image and prepare a selection of objects we can mask. As you can see, the only option on this image we have is the human because there is nothing else. So just click on it and select it. Once the mask is created, it doesn't look great, but we're going to fix that very quickly by going back and then into the mask actions and click on invert. So just like that, we have the triangle behind the person. However, I told you that I would like this part to be in front of the person. So to adjust this, we're going to use our brush and then we're just going to paint in part of the mask. So let's adjust the size just somewhere around here. And again, one click and then hold shift and another click right here. And just like that, we have the triangle around and everything looks great. So there you have it. This is how you can use the neon and glow tool in a combination with the studio light to create this really nice eye catching result. Once again, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think the result is great. By the way, just before I let you go, I want to quickly remind you that our Luminar Neo Autumn Bundle is back with over 721 new autumn elements. Get extra skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, LUTs, and presets to transform your autumn images with just a few clicks. To get the best possible price, make sure that you use the link in the description of this video. And to find out more about it, head to our website, cleverphotographer.com. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.